All right, today I'm going to tell you how I use the Godox V860 2C flash and the X-Pro trigger from Godox for two different events with my photography. One, event photography, two, a portrait session. Let's go. First, um, let's adjust the lights. All right, first I'm gonna tell you about the event photography. Uh, I have the T5i, the Canon Rebel here in my hand with the X-Pro trigger on it. And here I have the V862 C from Godox. And you'll notice on top, I have a Fong Dome. I had to make a decision about how to support my flash. One, I could have it right on top of the camera, right here. But I know that'll create kind of a harsh direct light and I wanted to have some off camera flash action. So I decided because these are just a few photos of people mingling and greeting and networking after the event, I would just support the flash by hand. It wasn't gonna be a three or four hour engagement. It was gonna be more like a 20 minute, 30 minute window. And so that was to totally doable. So I was gonna support the flash by hand, decision number one. Decision number two is I was gonna use the Fong Dome. Uh, and the Fong Dome is one of my favorite diffusers and I like it because it, it helps soften the light uh, and you can get very, very close to people and it, it just diffuses the light beautifully and softly. And um, because I'm holding this in my hand, I can also easily and flexibly change the, uh, the angle of the flash uh, regarding the subject. And so if there's an overhead light for one photo and I turn over here and there's not, I can give a little more direct light just by angling my hand different. So there's something to be said for this uh, kind of like run and gun situation, holding the flash with the, the uh, Fong Dome on it, is that it allows me a number of different ways to change the intensity of the light. One, I have this straight up and down. So I have this uh, hinge on the flash and I can angle it just like that. Right, and that's one way I can control the intensity of the flashes, point it directly at the subject like that. And the other one is I have my hand, which has its own type of uh, adjustment in it in the angle of my wrist. And so I can adjust that as well. But my hand also has two more advantages over a light stand or putting it on the, uh, the camera, which you're, you're committed to getting the lens uh, on your subject. And that's the elevation of the light, so I can raise it higher or lower, and the rotation of the wrist. So even though it seems a little run and gun and rinky dink, um, this is very, very powerful. And I find that I like, I intuit by the lighting that's around me, I intuit where to put my flash, almost like I'm painting with light uh, on the subject. And I really, really enjoy that. And uh, the Godox uh, did not fail, it was a perfect match. I really, really enjoy having that control. And so the, the Godox uh, flash was a great, um, a great tool for lighting this event. I'll show you a couple of pictures here. Another tip, um, I'm doing photography at the end of a literary event. And so I know that people are gonna be mingling, there's readers, there's poets, there's spoken word artists, people's that are, people are that are connected in the space that they aren't necessarily connected in the outside world. Maybe they are on Facebook, but maybe they're meeting for the first time. And so I know that I'm serving my client, which in this case was my wife. And one of the ways I can uh, serve the client is to make images that are portable, transmittable. Uh, I don't know if I would say viral, but they have a little bit of element of shock and surprise and that make people click on them, like them, share them, ask questions. And, and that's taking pictures of people together when they don't necessarily know each other. So in those moments fresh right after the event when people are networking and they're just chatting and there's a, an authentic connection, I'll just grab them, put a, a hand on a shoulder and say, hey, can I get a photo of the two of you? And sometimes you see the surprise because they're like, well, yeah, we didn't come together. But that's exactly what I want is those well-lit photos with this flash setup to go onto Facebook, let's say, and then people say, oh, who is that you're with? Or people say, hey, I didn't know you knew so-and-so. And, -so. and it, it helps people engage in a conversation about the event because these photos are different than everything else that they post on their timeline because their timeline is full of photos of family, photos of friends, pictures of their kids over and over. And suddenly they get tagged in a photo where somebody else is tagged 
and it's this unique, unusual, very um, special moment, and you're helping capture that, but then also the photos, because they're well lit, are beautiful, and they're shareable, and they're conversation worthy. Even if it's just drawing out another like or another love, people seeing two poets or two writers, people from the same field uh, connecting at a rare moment in time, it makes it special. That's a way to use your photography strategically so you can help your client get more reach with the uh, investment they've made with uh, your photography. All right, so just some tips. I go into a setting beforehand, before the event starts. I put this uh, setup together, I turn on the flash, I pair it, and then I get a practice subject and I take some photos and I set the manual settings and then I forget it the rest of the night and I just adjust by the angle of the flash, the height of the flash, the rotation of my hand, the, ro uh, the angle of the, the um, actual flash. And that's it, I control the flash. And also right here, there's a power adjustment. I might dial it in if I take a photo and I'm not happy with it, but I can usually do it so much quicker just by angling my hand and you're shooting several in a row. And so you know basically how, how much light is gonna uh, change from this angle to this angle. And that's much quicker than dialing in the, the manual settings on the flash, which will then communicate the trigger to the flash. All right, another benefit of the Fong Dome is this, is it's very, very strong, this diffuser. I really, really like it. And that means I can turn down the power of the flash so that the recharge or refresh time is quicker. So what I mean by that is if I have this at one over one and I have the flash way back here, it's gonna take longer for this to recharge, but I have this one over 32 and I hold the flash more up overhead, closer to my subjects, the refresh time is gonna be quicker. So that's one way that uh, it's a little hack because I can control the distance of the flash from the subject and this diffuser is powerful. All right, so let's talk about portrait photography. So portrait photography, I don't hold this by my hand, though I could uh, in certain situations. I choose to opt for a light stand. And so the light stand I have, I actually have my little aperture light on it right now. It's a nine foot stand and um, it's super, uh, it's, well I wouldn't say it's super heavy duty, but it's very, very durable. I'm happy with it. The thing you need to remember about your light stand is bring a weight, like a sandbag or something weighted to put on the stand so it doesn't blow over the wind. Especially if you have the second thing that I'm going to tell you about, the diffuser of choice for this is a Westcott 2001 43 inch optical white umbrella. And I use that, um, but it does catch the wind. Um, it's a good diffuser, it's nice, soft. I got it from a, a photography lighting course that I um, took in Skillshare, and I'll, I'll put the link below. That was a very, very helpful, helpful um, course. Um, but I use the nine foot light stand so you can have this range way up high or you can bring it down to four foot or so. There's actually another piece I put on the top that gives you a couple of angles to bend that through and it has the uh, hole for the umbrella for the Westcott. So there's a pair of them that go together, light stand and the Westcott, and I'll make sure I put the links below. Um, but for this, you use the same thing, the trigger here. You put this flash without the Fong Dome on top of the light stand and so that just sits off camera like that and you can move the, the stand wherever you want you can move your subject wherever you want you can move wherever you want um, and so I find that it's it's very easy to to use that light it's stable and it's steady you can raise it up or lower it um, but I become mobile and I'm the so I can do anything I want in terms of my body my posture my position my height I can stand on objects I can squat or kneel on uh, the ground and so I kind of have this ultimate mobility because my light is being held for me and um, I can raise and lower that. I become in charge of like where am I going to put the lens to create the composition that I want. And that's really it. I, I love these, uh, these assortment of uh, tools, the, uh, the light stand, the uh, Westcott uh, uh, diffuser umbrella, the Fong Dome and the Godox flash and trigger. These have been great for me for event photography and for portrait photography. And um, I'll, again, I'll put the links below. Um, I got them from a lighting course I took in Skillshare, so I'll put the link to that. And um, I have really enjoyed creating with light. And I just have to give um, a shout out to uh, Nikon ambassador, Matthew Jordan Smith. I'm um, listening to his podcast. He's emphasizing master one light, master one light. 
introduce one light first. When you're setting up a scenario that you're gonna be lighting, introduce one light before you put other things into the environment. See what that one light does and then master that. And so when I went into the portrait session, I was thinking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go for split lighting first. I'm gonna do Rembrandt lighting second because of the nature of the subject. He's an artist and I was trying to convey something with that. Maybe I'll do another video about those setups. Um, actually, I know I will be doing a video about um, taking pictures of, of Nick in that portrait session. We had a blast. Um, but set up one light and understand that light and what's contributing to the environment and how it affects your subject and master that light. So that's kind of the journey I'm on right now. And thanks for tuning in. And this has been super fun. And uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you are subscribed and you came back and you watched this video, thank you so much. Leave a comment. What's your favorite lighting setup? I think that's a, cr a question I'd like to know the answer to. Um, I'm really enjoying these tools, but I would love to learn more about what you do. Um, the only thing is, uh, one thing I'd love to learn is how to keep this fong dome together. I guess it's supposed to be, you pop it off and you put it in your bag, but I feel bad squishing it. And I, I lose this thing, it pops off and rolls on the floor. It's embarrassing, but I just don't know a better way to keep this on. Should I tape it on? Anybody else out there using the fong dome? Let me know what you think. All right, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Thank you for tuning in today. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Thank you.